Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're gonna work with quadrilaterals. So our learning goal for today says, I can compare and classify quadrilaterals. So the materials that you'll need for this lesson are an index card. If you don't have an index card, you can use a sticky note, you can use the corner of a piece of notebook paper, you just need something that has a straight corner of like a piece of paper that's not ripped or anything, okay? You'll also need a ruler, You'll need your lesson template with the shapes cut out. If you start with them cut out, it'll be much faster during your lesson. And you'll need your problem set because we're actually gonna work on that together during this lesson. All right, so make sure you grab all those materials before you get started. All right, friends. So here we're gonna start with our index card. We're gonna use this as a tool today. Um, it's like our... Um, it's our right angle tool is where, what we're going to call it. And you're actually going to be able to use these in lessons that are coming up. So make sure that you save your index card or your sticky note or whatever you're using that has these nice straight corners on it. Okay. All right. So when we go down the sides of something and we meet in the corner where that green dot is, that's a corner. Corners make an angle. This is a right angle. Okay, so when we look at this card, how many right angles does the index card have? I should pause the video, take a look at those corners and see how many corners or right angles this index card has. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. There are four right angles on here, okay? Because this is like our index card, all four corners are a right angle. That's true for all index cards, okay? All right, so what are some different ways we can group these shapes together? So here's the shapes. You guys have them from your lesson template maybe that you've cut out. I want you to pause the video and I want you to think about just what are some ways that you can group these shapes? Okay, so pause the video, think about that, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so some of the ways is you can say by name, right? You could put all the squares together. You could put the trapezoids together. You could put the rectangles together. So that's by name. Maybe by the number of sides, like you could count how many sides are on each shape. By the number of angles, right? We just learned about the angles. That's where the corners, where two sides meet together. So those are just some ways that you could group these different shapes. All right, so what is a polygon? Polygons are closed shapes that have no gaps or overlaps between the straight sides. So let's take a look at this picture. So here on the left-hand side, I have a column that has polygons. So notice how they're all closed. There's no openings anywhere. There's no gaps. Nothing um, goes over one side or the other. And then if we look at the column on the right-hand side, those are all not polygons uh, because like the first one, it has a gap in it, right? It doesn't come together and it's not closed at the end. It's open. Um, the other one does not have straight sides, right? It looks kind of like a loop of string. So these ones on the right-hand side are not polygons because they don't have straight sides. They are not closed shapes and some of them overlap each other. Okay, so polygons with four straight sides are called quadrilaterals. And the word quad means four. And I like to remember this when I think of, have you guys ever seen like, a, um, like an ATV or someone calls it like a quad when they go out and maybe go like kind of on like, uh, like riding through the woods or whatever on like those ATVs. Have you guys ever heard of those or seen those before? Kind of like a monster truck almost, but like the small, small version. Um, those can sometimes be called quads because they have four wheels. So that's what helps me think about what is a quadrilateral. It has four straight sides. All right. So let's group the quadrilaterals together. So I want you to pause the video, take your shapes that you've cut out. If you haven't cut them out, you need to pause and cut them out. And then I want you to group them together to find all the quadrilaterals that have four straight sides and put them together. And then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, here we go. So what do you notice about the polygons that you grouped? 
when I look at some of them, I think like some of them are slanted and some are boxy, right? Like D is definitely kind of slanted. It's definitely not boxy. And so is K. They're a little slanted. So is A. Some of the squares, or some are squares and rectangles, right? We know those shapes pretty well. And then even one of the polygons looks like a boomerang, kind of, right? I think D looks kind of like a boomerang. A pointy boomerang, but a boomerang. And that they all have four angles, okay? All right, so let's complete the first row on the problem set. So make sure that you grab your problem set. You're gonna cut out the polygons from your lesson template. So if you've already done that, Perfect. If not, just take the time to do that. You're going to find the polygons that have four sides. Then you're going to record the letters on the problem set and choose one to draw a sketch of. Okay, so you're looking at all of those polygons that you just cut out. You're labeling any of them that have four sides in the middle column. And then the last column is just to sketch a shape of one of the uh, polygons that you find. Okay, so pause the video, do just row one, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here's what I came up with for the polygons. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, which is all of them. So all of the shapes that you had had four sides, okay? This is just the one that I choose to, drew, to draw a sketch of was the rectangle, okay? All right, so let's talk about trapezoids. Trapezoids are quadrilaterals that have at least one set of parallel lines or parallel sides. Hmm, what are parallel sides? Is anyone else thinking that? Okay, well, let's talk about parallel lines, okay? Think of parallel sides like the two side lines of a capital H, so just like this. These two in blue now are the side lines, right? We can take those and extend them. Do you think these lines will ever touch? If I keep going on forever and ever and ever, do you think they'll ever touch? Yeah, nope. They're sure not going to touch. You can even slant the H and still have the parallel lines. Not all parallel lines stand vertical. Okay, so some of them can be slanted like this. And we saw that in some of our shapes with the polygons. So here again are my two parallel sides, right? The two sides of the H. If I extend them, do you think these lines will ever touch? Absolutely not, okay? So if they're true parallel lines, they will never touch no matter how long. You can extend them for miles and miles and miles and they'll never touch each other because they're parallel lines. They run parallel. I also like to think of parallel lines as like if I see the word parallel, if you guys look up at the very top, it has the word parallel and there's two L's in the middle of parallel those two L's will never touch either. So when you see the word parallel, you can see that those two L's run side by side but will never touch if you extend them. So that helps me remember that too. So you can use the trick with the H or the two L's in parallel. All right, so here's some other lines. These lines aren't touching right now. Are they parallel? Nope. They don't look like an H anymore, and if we extend them, they're going to eventually cross right here, okay? So you have to think about just not, even though in the first part they weren't touching, but if you extend them, that's when you really have to think of. If you extend them, and then will they touch when you extend them? And if they will, they are not parallel lines. All right, so let's talk about trapezoids. Trapezoids are quadrilaterals oh, that have at least one set of parallel lines. Okay, so we'll come back to our trapezoids. We left it for a second to talk about those parallel lines. So here's a picture of a trapezoid. If trapezoids have at least one set of parallel lines, can they have more than one set? 
Think about that for a second. If they have, if trapezoids must have at least one set of parallel lines, can they have more than one set? Yes, they sure can. Okay, at least just means it has to have one or more. Okay, all right, so let's complete the second row on the problem set. Okay, so we've already done the first row. For the second row, you're going to find all the shapes that have at least one set of parallel lines. Can they have more than one set? Absolutely, right? That's what we just talked about. You're also going to record the letters on your problem set and choose one to draw a sketch. Okay, so pause the video, do just the second row, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. So here are the polygons that I came up with that have at least one set of parallel lines. B, C, E, F, G, H, I, J, and L. Okay, if you came up with all of those, rock on. If not, maybe you're missing one of them, go back and look at the shape to see maybe why you didn't label that one as having at least one set of parallel lines. Okay, and here is my sketch. I chose to sketch a trapezoid. All right, let's take a look. These are the only shapes that did not have at least one set of parallel lines. This one, this one, this one. Okay, so those three did not have at least one set. All right, so all of these shapes have at least one set of parallel lines. This shape is the only shape with one set of parallel sides. The rest of the shapes have two sets of parallel lines. All right, friends, let's talk about parallelograms. Parallelograms are four-sided polygons that have two sets of parallel lines. So they need two sets of parallel lines. Let's complete the third row on the problem set. Okay, so you're looking for um, all the shapes that have two sets of parallel sides, and you're gonna record the letters on the problem set and choose one to draw a sketch. Okay, so pause the video, complete row three, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, let's take a look. So these are the shapes that have two sets of parallel lines. B, C, F, G, H, I, and L. And here is my sketch. Okay. All right, let's complete the fourth row on the problem set now. We're cruising along with this problem set, friends. All right, so you're gonna use your right angle tool, which is your index card, or if you have a sticky note, whatever you have that has that perfect corner on the side. And you're going to measure and group all the shapes that have four right angles. So the way that you're gonna measure that, friends, is you're actually gonna take that index card and put it up to the corner. If it does not line up perfectly along the sides of that index card, it is not a, rec a right angle. Okay, then you're going to record the letters on the problem set and choose one to draw a sketch. Okay, so pause the video, complete row four on your problem set, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here are the ones that have four right angles, B, C, F, and H. And here is my sketch. All right, so let's complete the last row on the problem set. You're going to find all the groups or find and group all of the squares. Which attributes make special squares? Or make squares special? They have four equal sides and four right angles. So make sure you're looking for those. Then you're gonna record the letters on your problem set and choose one to draw a sketch. So pause the video, complete row, the last row, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here we go. So we have C and F, and here is my sketch. All right, so did the number of polygons get smaller or larger as we added attributes? So that means you're thinking about this column right here. When we started at the top, 
we had all of those polygons. And then what happened by the time we got to the bottom? Did they get smaller or larger? The amount of polygons that fit into that. Did it get larger or smaller and why? So pause the video, take a look and analyze that and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends. So here we go. They got smaller because the attributes in our chart became more special and more specific. Okay. So the first one was just how many had four sides. Well, that was all of them because they all had four sides. But by the time we got to the very bottom, we we're asking for something very specific of four right angles and four equal sides, not just four sides anymore, four equal sides. So that changes things quite a bit. All right, so look at polygons C and F, okay? They are included in every group. Why do you think that is? I want you to pause the video, look at all those groups. Why do you think they're in all of the groups? All right, friends, here we go. They have four sides two sets of parallel lines, and four right angles. They're like the perfect shape because they follow all of those attributes. All right, so why aren't polygons B and H in the last category? These specific rectangles have four sides, two sets of parallel lines, and four right angles. Why are they not included in the last one? What characteristic are they missing or attribute? Pause the video, take a look, and then click play when you're ready to talk about it. All right, so the difference, friends, is they don't have equal sides. Okay, those are rectangles. Rectangles don't have equal sides, but squares have to have equal sides. All right, a look at polygon I. It has four equal sides, and two sets of parallel lines. Why isn't it included in the last category? What attribute is it missing? Pause the video, take a closer look, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, what attribute is it missing to allow it to go into that last category? Yeah, it doesn't have four right angles, right? So it's missing that. All right, so why is a square a rhombus? Ooh, that's a tricky one. Why don't you think about that for a minute, and then click play when you're ready to talk about it. All right, friends, here we go. Because it has four equal sides, okay? All right, so why isn't shape I a square? Ooh, tricky. Pause. Think about it, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends. So because it doesn't have right angles. All right, so problem four asks you to use a ruler to draw a line between opposite corners in each quadrilateral in the chart. So this kind of line is called a diagonal line. Draw diagonal lines in each polygon on page one of your problem set. Pause the video. Go ahead and draw. Oh, look, friends, I drew one for you. Sorry. If you look in the very first one of my rectangle, okay, those are diagonal lines from corner to corner. Pause, draw them in all of the sketches that you drew on page one of your problem set, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. So yours might look different than mine because you might have chosen a different shape to sketch, but otherwise, here is how mine would look if I drew diagonal lines from corner to corner. Which new polygons did you make by drawing the diagonal line? So what's the new shape that we made in all of those? Yeah, we made triangles. All quadrilaterals are made up of two triangles. 
my mind is blown by that one. That's pretty amazing. Okay. All right. So friends, you rock. Great job classifying or comparing and classifying quadrilaterals. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye friends.